This anchoring challenge is for day 8 and it's called Dictionaries and Maps. When you start this challenge, they give you a couple of headers. You might not need all of them, but they include this one here called map. So you need to enter the main function and then write your code right here. The instructions are on your left and they say, given n number of names and phone numbers, assemble a phone book that maps a friend's name to their respective phone numbers. So we're going to associate names with phone numbers, and then we're going to have a set of queries and we're supposed to return a string in this format, which is name equals the phone number, or if the query is invalid because the name is not in the phone book, which we are simulating, then we need to print not found. For the inputs, the first line is an integer, which is n, that is the number of entries in the phone book. And then after that, we're also going to have an unknown number of queries. And then we're going to have n number of strings, which correspond to the names and the phone numbers. And then after that, we're going to have an unknown number of queries. So this is an example here, n equals three. Then after that, we have three lines of strings and they all follow the same templates. So at first we have the name of the friends, then we have a space, and then here we have the phone number. The same thing here, Tom has a phone number, and then Harry also has a phone number. So our phone book is gonna be a map to map the names with the phone numbers. Then after that, we have an unknown number of queries. In this case, it's the same number, it's also N, but it's not fixed. It's not guaranteed that we're going to have n number of queries. We don't know, but we have queries. And then here we want to find the phone number of Sam. So we need to print Sam equals and the phone number of Sam. Then here we are looking for Edward. He's not in this map. So we print not found. And then finally here we are querying for Harry and Harry is in the phone book. So we print Harry equals the phone number. I'm now going to paste my solution here. And in this challenge, we need to take care of the inputs ourselves. So at first I have n here, I'm calling it num just for clarity. So I'm creating an integer, which is going to correspond to what they refer to as n. And then here I'm going to have my string inputs for the names and phone numbers. This challenge is all about mapping names and numbers. So I'm going to have a map of strings called m. So in my map, the key value pairs are going to be strings on both sides. So the keys are going to be the names as strings and the phone numbers are also going to be strings. And then I'm going to get the inputs for num, which is the number of entries in the phone book. And then here I'm adding cin.ignore because I intend to use the getLine function as I'm processing my entries. So I've talked about that in previous videos, but I'm not going to focus too much on that. Just don't forget to add this line. Otherwise you might get some unexpected behavior. Now I can process my phone book entry by entry. So I'm getting the full line of inputs at every iteration. That could be something like Sam with the number here, or Tom with the number, or Harry with the number. So I'm storing whatever I'm getting inside of my string called inputs. And then here I want to use the find method on strings to find the delimiter between the names and the phone numbers. To capture the name, I'm gonna create another string called S1. It's gonna go from index zero, which is the first character in the whole string here, all the way to the space. Because I've captured the index where the space appears inside my string and it's stored inside of space here, I can have from zero all the way to space. And that is the name of the friend. Then for the phone number, that is going to be from the space plus one, that is the first character inside of the number parts of my string all the way to the end. Now I can insert that pair inside my map and this is how it's done. So I have m, which is my map dot insert. That is a method available on maps in C++. Then I have my pair here, which is a pair of strings for the key and the value. This here is the name and then the phone number. So here I'm mapping both the name and the phone number and adding that pair to my map. Once I'm done with the mapping of the names and the phone numbers, I can deal with my queries. So I'm gonna have another string called name, and then I'm going to create an iterator to iterate through my map. Here, I'm using a while loop, and I have get line, C in, and then my name string. The reason why I'm not using a for loop is because we don't know how many times we need to loop through our queries. If you scroll up again in the instructions, they say there are an unknown number of lines of queries. So I'm using this while loop 
and this year this get line function will fail once there are no more lines of queries so long as there are lines of queries to process i'm going to find the name inside of my map so again the lines of queries look like this the names that we need to query inside our map as the keys and if we can find those names inside our map then the iterator which i'm calling itr is going to point to the end of the map which is m.end. So in this case, if it points to the end, then this else statement is going to execute and I'm going to print not found. Otherwise, if itr is not equal to the end of the map, it means that we were able to find the name that we queried inside our phone book, which is our map. And so I can print the key, which I can access using itr, the arrow notation, and then first, and then I can have this equal sign and ITR second is for the values, which are the phone numbers inside my phone book. So every time this print is going to look something like this, Sam equals phone number or Harry equals phone number. And like I said, if we did not find the name inside our phone book, which is our map, then we're going to print not found. And that's it for the whole code. So I'm going to run this code now. We've passed the sample test case. Now I'm going to submit this code and we are done. We've passed all the test cases. So that's it for day eight, dictionaries and maps. If you like my solution, please subscribe to my channel. Check out the GitHub link in my description and I'll catch you next time.